What's up guys, it's Instinct here and today I'll be showing you guys how to animate splines in Cinema 4D. You guys do not need any plugins and this can be done on any version of Cinema 4D. If you guys are a member on Patreon, you guys can go ahead and download this project file. With all that being said guys, let's jump right into the tutorial. Alright, so what you guys want to do is come up here, hold down, and grab a helix. From here, I'm just going to go ahead and make this a bit smaller, something like that. And go ahead and go to coordinates and then change the H to 90 degrees, just like this. I'm actually going to do negative 90 degrees just because I like it going the other way, just like that. From here, what we're going to do is go ahead and hold down right here, get a circle, and then we'll just put this at 10 for now. We can change this later, but I'm just going to go with 10. And then go ahead, hold down right here, and then go ahead and get a sweep. And just go ahead and drag these both into the sweep with the circle on the top, just like this. And I'm going to bump this down to maybe 8. We go with 6, maybe. Yeah. I'll go with actually seven. So from here, what we want to do is go ahead and click the helix. And what we're going to do is go ahead and mess around with this. So you guys can go ahead and make this a bit smaller. You can make this a bit bigger. You guys can make this a bit longer or like add more curls to it. Make it longer with the height. Um, do all sorts of things with it. Um, but right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and put the subdivision up to 200 just to make it a little bit smoother. Um, and then go ahead and drag this to the left just a little bit more actually just like this just to make it a little bit more centered and uh, When you click on sweep you'll notice start and end growth. That is how we're gonna be animating it But um for now, I'm gonna go ahead and customize this a little bit more. So I'm gonna go something like maybe 50 um, No, let's go 100 on the end radius and 100 on the start radius something like that and then I'm going to go ahead and increase the height quite a bit, something stretched out like that. And go ahead and get the end angle and then get this to like maybe, let's do like 560. Right, let's go with 560. And here we go, 720. I'm going to go with 720, which is actually, actually I think what we had it at. Um, uh, but yeah, this will do. So from here once you guys have your spline settings and again i really highly recommend you guys experiment around um with uh, these settings but what we want to do is once you are satisfied with your sweep um go ahead and go to the start and end growth and put these both to zero percent just like this and then go ahead and click this button right here this will add a keyframe and then we're also going to go ahead and do one for start growth as well now from here, what we're going to do is go ahead and go to 45 frames into the project file. Um, if your project file is like something other than 90 degrees, just go half of that. So uh, for me, it's 90, so half of that is 45. If you guys have like, uh, if your project file is like 180 frames, then do 90 frames, etc. Um, so, so go halfway through and then put the start growth to 25%. And then go ahead and put the end growth to 50%. And then go ahead and then make sure you add your keyframes and then go ahead and go to 90 and then put these both at 100% across the board and then add your keyframes and then once you go ahead and play this back we'll get something sort of like this which is pretty cool so that's basically how to animate the, uh, the actual spline itself. Um, there is a couple more tricks we can do to make this pop a little bit more. So from here what we can do is go ahead and shift click and select start and end growth. Right click and go to animation and go to show F curve. And basically what this will do is it will show you guys the animation path like the kind of like the flow of the spline. So if you guys are familiar with easy ease or ease of ease uh, from After Effects. This is basically the same thing. Um, what you guys can do is go ahead and select all these points and you guys can go ahead and move these all at once if you guys would like them to be linear, not linear, but parallel. So like if you guys get something like this um, and we go ahead and minimize that and then go ahead and show this, you guys can see that uh, the speed changes. Of course, it's all wonky because I just randomly changed it, but you guys get the idea. Um, you guys can, I'm gonna hit Control Z you guys can individually change each point as well. Hold control or hold shift, and then you guys can individually change each point. 
and go ahead and just kind of mess around with the tools. Um, I'm just going to leave it at default because I think it looks best at default. One last thing you guys can do is select all of these points and then go ahead and click right here and it'll make it linear for you so that it will travel at a consistent speed. So if I play this back, you guys can see that it's going at a consistent speed all the way through. So that's enough for the F curve. So for now, what I'm going to do is go to MoGraph and go to Cloner and go ahead and put the sweep into the Cloner and then click Cloner and then go to Mode and then go to Radial. Now what you guys can do is go ahead and hit play and as you guys can see it clones it in a radial kind of pattern. Now what I would recommend doing is change this to 4. I either go with 4, 5, or 6. Uh, for this I'm going to go with 6. Uh, but what you guys can do is go ahead and go to transform and just kind of like mess around with this. Uh, get some different looks. Um, maybe do something like this. Let's see what this looks like. Get some nice, really kind of swirly thing going on here. And you guys can go ahead and just mess around with these settings, get different results. Uh, something like this looks pretty cool. Uh, yeah, and you guys can go ahead and again, mess with uh, these ones. Basically what these do is go ahead and they kind of like uh, change the angle of how these splines uh, rotate. So you guys can go ahead and rotate them on a bunch of different axes. And you guys can animate these as well. There's so much you can do with this. Uh, but yeah, that's basically like what I do for the most part. Uh, you guys can also go ahead and kind of like space these out. So if I go back on the camera and go ahead and change the radius, you guys can go ahead and see. Uh, you guys can space them out if you guys would like. Um, now, if it's going like off a screen like this, um, and you guys don't want that, and you want to like, so like you would decrease the radius, like something like that, but then it's like, you know, too close together, what you guys can do is I, if I bring it back up to like high, something like that. And what you guys can do is come up here, hit the scale tool, make sure you're selected on the object and just go ahead and scale this down just like so. And just like that, you guys have the animation. Uh, if you want the spline a little bit bigger because it does scale the spline as well, you guys can go back into the circle and put it to like maybe five. We'll put it even back at where you guys had it. I think I had it at six. I don't really remember, but uh, yeah, so like if we watch this back, this is what I have created Something really cool just like that and yeah, so it's basically just all about exploration and you guys can get so many different results So yeah, that's basically it for the spline animation tutorial If you guys like this tutorial make sure to drop a like comment and subscribe Let me know what other videos you guys would like to see and with all that being said guys. It's been instinct signing out for now Peace